Hello you guys out there in YouTube land. How are you doing? I hope you're enjoying our winter. We're having some pretty radical stuff going on in California. So hey, uh, check in with us. Let me know where you are and uh, leave your comments there, who you are and where you are, and it gets you in practice for what we're going to be doing in a minute here. I'd love to as much as I can have this be like a live back and forth communication with you guys. So uh, California, we've been pounded by storms. It's actually a great thing because we've been in a drought for, you know, five or six years. So for us, this is just really uh, a welcome event. But the storms have been rather brutal. You know, everything seems to go in really strong strong changes from one to the other you know we're either in drought or now we're like just pounded with storms and water and huge waves it's actually pretty been pretty beautiful i've gotten some good photographs we get out every day and walk around see what's going on we have a trail right near our house uh, we're really fortunate to be able to walk on this trail right to downtown carmel and there's all sorts of trees that have fallen down in fact the the park is officially closed, even though we sneak in there. Okay, hey Sue in Sun Valley, good to see you, and Chris in New York. Uh, awesome to have you guys with us. So, hey, let's get the party started, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of things. But first of all, let's thank our sponsor, that's Bay Photo Lab. And their slogan is, let's print something amazing. I really love working with them. And I want you guys, as you know, to print stuff. So here's some of their specials, 25% off on stick and switch photo tiles. You can make photo tiles here on your wall. Those are kind of interesting. 25% off on those. And then this is really cool, 40% off on large prints. So you can get um, sizes 16 by 16 and larger, you're going to get 40% off. That's a good size. I mean, I like to see stuff on the wall that's big. So that's a really handy uh, discount for you guys. You can go all the way up to 50 inches wide or 120 inches long. That's pretty big. But you should really consider your, a couple of your best prints take advantage of this sale. 40% off is huge. That's a huge discount. And as always, you're gonna get 25% off on your first order. I love Bay Photo Lab. Let them help you. Let them be your printing source. You'll, you'll get great results. They have fantastic customer service, really great people to work with. Okay, so Grace, thanks for joining us. If you guys put a like in there somehow, it, I don't know what happens to the algorithm. It does some kind of secret sauce and it lets people know we're here. So if you guys don't mind liking, you know you're going to like what's going on here. And definitely, please leave your comments as we go through this. Okay, I want to talk to you guys first of all about a really important subject that I, it's my go-to thing at this time of the year, which is setting your goals. But I want to take a little bit of a look at what that means. You know, like anything, you can set a goal kind of like automatically. Oh, yeah, I want to be a better photographer this year. Oh, yeah, I want to maybe get my work shown. Let's go a little deeper than that. I want to get what would be like the deepest you can go with your goals. And by that, I mean like what really touches your heart, not just your head. Because a goal is definitely, you know, a thought process. This is what I want to accomplish. But let's go a little deeper and get the, the emotion out of it. Just like we want to do with a photograph. Like, what is that that really triggers an emotion that makes you almost tear up? Either because you don't know how you're going to achieve it, 
or because it's been unreachable, but you really do want to someday achieve it. And this doesn't have to be just for 2023. I want you to really, this is, this is an exercise for your notebook. This is a notebook exercise. You know, we have the official AYP notebook here. And whatever notebook you're using, I want you to really write down that goal that makes you kind of like stop. You know, that something happens. And you go, and you may even write it down and go, I'll never be able to do that. Mark, that's beyond my reach. That's okay. I mean, as long as it is something you can move towards. Many years ago, I taught mountaineering. I was a young mountaineering instructor in my late teens, believe it or not, when I was 19, 20. That's when I took an instructor's course and I became a mountaineering instructor. And you know, in the mountains, it's all about goals. It's all goal setting. We were in the mountains for 30 days. Every one of our courses was 30 days. And during that time, our goal was to take these students and turn them into mountaineers, turn them into people who could really comfortably handle what the mountains could dish out. And that includes crossing raging rivers, that included camping or bivouacking at the top of a mountain, that include, included really learning how to cook meals that were actually tasty. And basically our goal was to teach these students how to be comfortable in the mountains and really enjoy when they do go into the mountains, really enjoy it, not have it be an uncomfortable experience. It really taught me a lot of things. But one of the things is, of course, you climb a mountain, you have to set a goal. What mountain are you going to climb? What, when do you want to get there? And when do you want to come back? And you know, the important thing about climbing a mountain is not just getting to the top, but getting back down again. So we set goals. Sometimes you got up very, very early, three in the morning, you know, because you had to be at the top at a certain time and then come back. Now we were, we were in Colorado and Colorado as uh, Sue knows, Sun Valley is not very far away. Uh, the weather can get really extreme in the afternoon. You get huge thunderstorms and that's just a really bad thing to be on a mountain when you're in a, a storm. So we had to plan our climb to get up and get down before one of those storms hit. Someday I'll tell you a story about how I didn't do that as a young instructor and the lesson I learned. But like getting back to the goal point, like you set a, a goal, I want to climb this mountain, I want to come back. But what's your mountain? It's nobody else's. And this is the other important thing about goals. It's about you. you. It's not like what somebody else set for you or what you see on social media or you know, I just hope I get a lot of likes or whatever. Those are phony goals. Don't go for those. You know, my wife and I were talking about social media, how boring it really is. I hate to say it, it really is. You know, you scroll through and it's like you're waiting for something to jump out at you and be exciting. She did, uh, I, this was a goal for her last year. She hiked the Camino de Santiago in Spain. If you don't know what that is, you should Google it. It's a pilgrimage, and many people go on it. It was 550 miles, I believe. And that was a goal that she had. She set it. She, she went with a friend. I couldn't go with her, unfortunately, but she went with her best friend. They made it. And they, she's putting together a book of that journey. One of the pictures, she has it all laid out on a table, which is a really good way to do it. You heard that from Dan Milner lay your book out in the physical sense. So if you have a goal of putting a book together, keep this in mind. Make little prints or get prints made even if they're done at CVS because this is just for your layout and put them on your page how you want it and where you want your text to go and it's so much better to lay it out in that physical sense. You can certainly do it you know online as well but it'll help you put it together. One of the prints that she has is, we have no Wi-Fi talk to each other. I love that. 
we have no Wi-Fi talk to each other. And we should remember that, this whole social media thing, like really, it's only a, it's a shadow of what we should be doing, which is talking to each other. But back to your goal, I want you to really narrow this down, like what is it that you want to reach? Where do you want to go? What do you want to accomplish? If it's partially done in 2023, 20, that's fine. Put it out there. But try to, as I said, try to grab that. What is, what is it that grabs you emotionally, not just up here? Okay? That's my best advice for you right now. And work it out. And please do let me know what that is. You can reach me through social media. <laughs> you can reach me on Instagram. You know, one of the things I really treasure on Instagram is the conversations that I have with you guys. I, I get a lot of DMs and I respond to them. I really like that. Same thing on YouTube. You don't have to just say, hey, I like this or whatever. You can ask a question and we'll get you an answer. How's that sound? Okay, well, Jared, we're going to start looking at some, uh, some prints, some not prints, but some photographs here. Are you all set on your end? I don't hear you. Does that mean you're in the green room? We better check. You are. I don't hear Jared. Okay, does that mean you've messaged me? Uh, let's try this again, Jared. You're not in the green room. I uh, don't think. There we go. How's there we that? go. Okay. Hello. You, we have two screens, and for some reason the other one wasn't. Okay, well, there you are. So before we do, Christopher in New York, the official... Yeah, our AYP notebook assembles your papers, that's true. Uh, and good afternoon, Gear from Norway. Good afternoon. And Mike in Mississippi. My wife is from Oxford, Mississippi, where John Grisham wrote many books. And I still think, I think he still lives there, although I heard he might have moved away. Okay, well, we're ready to look at some stuff to get critiqued, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so our first photo we're taking a look at is from uh, their username is Fishography, um, or Fishography. Fishography. Fish okay. Does that mean you take um, photos of fish? I think so. They also uh, it appears they're fishing in their profile picture. Okay. Uh, but in this one, they're doing some experimenting. So first post here and first time exploring shutter speeds. Images are a bit grainy. Is it time to add? Uh, a filter and so I've got this photo in black and white and then uh -huh. they also have um, a second photo let me find that but you can critique on this one if you want while I find the other, grab the other one uh, yeah I don't I'm not seeing a lot of grain but that doesn't mean it's not there I mean you know we're everything we look at is coming through uh, you know several layers of electronics <clears throat> but if you want to deal with it you certainly should Okay, it's a black and white of a street scene. Interesting kind of town. Um, and if it's just an experiment, that's fine. It's, uh, to me, there is a person that looks like behind that car, but it's very difficult to see that that's really like what we're supposed to be looking at. My light, that my eye goes, of course, to the tin cottage. That's kind of the center. It would be nice to have a subject right there. Somebody walking into a tin cottage or walking out. That person who's sort of kind of barely visible behind the car, yeah, have them walk into the tin cottage. It'll just add some life to this thing and it'll give you a punctuation point and give you a center of attention. You know, again, you've heard me say this, but I'll say it again, unless you're shooting a documentary uh, you are free to be the director. You're, you're, you're not doing photojournalism. If you're creating a photograph, be the director. Get that person to walk into the frame or, or walk into the store there or walk out of it would probably be even more interesting. Mm -hmm. So you've got a good street scene set up. Do something with it. This okay. is the color one that they took, and I think... At least on my end, I can see a little bit more grain um, okay. in this one. But once again, it's, Noise. you know, color in. Yeah. yeah, this is more interesting because of those three girls. 
and you yeah I see your long exposure there this kind of uh, car going by with the tail lights it looks like the the red tail light it's interesting mm -hmm. uh, keep working on it you're experimenting so just keep experimenting until you've got you know these are tools and I do use that as sh a slow shutter speed if I want to show motion it's interesting how those girls were standing pretty still because they're not wiggling around but you had a car go by so good on your experimentation keep keep it up all, all right. right uh this one we're going a little bit into the past uh but it was submitted by uh our good friend christopher carpenter we're going uh, back to christmas time yeah and this is in new orleans so in this new is you get around don't you chris Christopher, you're in New York, you're in Mexico, on the border. Uh, that's an interesting, you know, photograph. The guy looks like he's out of uh, Mandalorian, <laughs> which, by the way, by the way, has a new season. I saw. I haven't, I haven't checked so it out. Yet. You've already gotten into it, Jared. Oh, um, I, it hasn't started yet, but the trailer is. Uh, yeah, I'm excited it's, about it looks that. Awesome. My grandson is a huge fan. And we have watched some, but he won't watch any with me that he hasn't seen with his dad. His, <laughs> he and his dad get the first viewing, and he will not go ahead. I couldn't get him to, no, Dad, I haven't seen it with my dad yet. I can't watch that. Anyway, um, that does look like something out of Mandalorian. The guy is so shadowy. It's interesting with the glasses. And what he's doing is kind of hiding there. You know, he's keeping himself hidden. Yeah, that's interesting. You've got also his foot being raised, so he's tapping. Yeah, that's cool. That's an important gesture point. Um, I'm sure you probably played with the shadows to try to see what it looked like to bring out maybe some of his face. It's probably not a lot to work with there. Uh, you know, with Lightroom and Photoshop, you could put a mask around that and play with that. I, you know, I'm guessing there just isn't much to work with. There's just not a much much detail. But anyway, it's an interesting street scene. So it tells us a story about this sax player. Nobody is around him, which is also kind of interesting. You know, he's just hanging out with n apparently nobody around, and that sort of says something about what's going on at that time but good one okay and it's framed right. nicely between those pillars you know you've got a got a good frame there and those little bits of light around his uh, left side yeah those little lights kind of peeking through give it a little bit of a layering effect which is cool all right all right this next one so I'm gonna take uh, two um, so Sue had some fun visitors over at her house. Uh, she said this one was a big surprise, and she wow. had to just quickly use her iPhone 13 uh, to take this photo. But as we like to say, the best camera you have is the one that you have. The one that's with you. you. Yeah. The one in your hand. That's pretty cool. What are those? What elk. Is? That's an elk, but no antlers. That's an elk, huh? Okay. Yep. There's your golden. That's what my golden would be doing. Although she'd probably be barking her head off. I'm sure there was some barking. Uh, the caption with this was two gentle souls." I know it's kind of interesting that your golden is not just freaking out and barking all over the place. Uh, I love that little touch of the nose. That's really cool. And it's... then, as a quick dslr this is one that she took in a series later okay so there's elk she was able antlers. to get her dslr yeah i always think of elk with their antlers but this um maybe just because of the timing but anyway that's go back to the other one so you're getting a moment there you know that's what's cool about that um just a tiny little thing i just get rid of that chair leg on the right just because you know, it's interesting. What was it? What was I watching? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I look at a lot of stuff, especially if it has the word creativity in it. And Rick Rubin, who you may or may not recognize, is an incredible music producer. Has produced 
hundreds of really great artists. And he was uh, on 60 Minutes recently. He came out with a new book. He was on 60 Minutes last week and also uh, another podcast. And, you know, it's amazing what you can learn from other genres, or not even other genres, other mediums. And he was talking about in music, it's, it's mostly about getting rid of things. You know, getting rid of that excess stuff. Phil Spector was like all about adding, you know, and building this big sound. And that's amazing. You know, he had the wall of sound. He had these big, like, Ike and Tina Turner, you know, this just incredible presence of sound. That's one way to go. But uh, Rick Rubin was saying, you know, let, look at what you can remove. And photography is often about what you can get rid of so that your eye does not wander. So, Sue, I would just edit that chair leg out of there. Yeah, I mean, you can certainly do that in Photoshop or Lightroom. You could crop it if you needed to. But that would leave my eye just now really focused on your two subjects that coinc that coming together right there is that's where the magic is right there so try to get rid of anything that just deflects your attention I mean if you think of it in terms of music you don't want to have like in the middle of a guitar solo like a cymbal right bang you know, that would then whoa wait a minute why did, why did that interrupt this this instrument that I want to put my attention on Attention is a really important thing. It's a really big component in what we're doing with our art, is we're putting attention, we're drawing attention, we're pointing out, we're directing attention. And that's going back to the goal point. Why do you set a goal? Because you want to direct your attention towards the big picture. Where are you going with this? So that you're not doing this. You're not just wandering around one day, oh, I think I should make a book. No, I really should be going out and doing wedding photography. No, I think I'll go into video. You know, you're just, you're like a drunk driver at that point. You're just weaving all over the place. Stay focused. Okay, let's see who's next. All right, let's continue with the theme of wildlife. Um, we've got a photo here uh, from Yael. Uh, and uh, the caption with this one was saying, the camera, it's Canon R6. Let me try zooming in a little bit. And I see a comment from Jay-Z, JF. Yeah, I agree. You know, I that that mystery is, is a cool thing. I, I'm just always curious what, what else might be able to be accomplished with it. There's a fair amount of noise I see in this image. And uh, I think that might be, it's a little lower quality. Yeah. Um, okay. Image. I think that's where some. It's of cool of you know how you got all those birds doing different like things. They're they're kind of moving around their different wings. That's actually a really interesting photograph. You know what might be really interesting to try is to make it into a, a total silhouette. Get rid of the blue sky and make that white. Mm. Just a thought. Um, just. You might try that. Just turn it into a black and white. Sometimes I'll do that if it's just like there's really nothing in the background. In this case, there's just blue. Uh, get rid of it all together and just make it a white, just absolutely white. Ch check that out. See what you think. That's my first thought. But yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's interesting though. If you guys like these suggestions, you don't give her. You know, you don't have to do them or not. But one thing I suggest that you do is try them out and then you repost them on the AYP club site. And let's let other people comment on it and I'll go back and look at them too and let you know what I think. That's the beauty of our community. We can keep following up. We don't have to just have this broadcast and then disappear. Okay, good. Who's next? All right. We've got one from AJ and the caption with this one was bird watching. You know what I found out today? I before this call, I had a before this. <laughs> oh man, I'm all. 
broadcast. Think, I've got all these things going on in my head, Zoom meetings and phone calls. Before this broadcast, I had a really great call with my good friend, Scott Kelby. What a wonderful guy he is. And he told me something I had no idea. Who do you think is the number one consumer of camera equipment? I never would have guessed this. Who do you think, and this is according to B&H, who are the number one camera store in the world, who are the biggest consumers of camera gear? What do you think? Wedding photographers? That probably would have been a guess of mine, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, wedding photographers have usually two cameras and two, len two lenses. The biggest consumer of camera gear are bird photographers. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Because they buy all sorts of long lenses, a lot of different gear. They're the biggest, they are the biggest market. I completely had no idea. That just happened to be a date, a little factoid that I got just before this. Anyway, here's a bird photographer. And who is this again? Uh, this is AJ. AJ, okay, AJ. That is a beautiful bird. It looks like what we have right in our backyard here. A cow elk. Thank you. I like to get these stories going. Is that a, uh, a, a it's not a red tail. What is it? Is it a, tell us. Somebody what guessed a red tail. Uh, there, um, I don't think it's a red they tail. They didn't specify, but somebody was thinking it might be. Yeah, I don't think it is, but it may be if it is. We have a red shoulder hawk that lives right on our property here. We have a lot of oak trees, and during one of these big storms last week, it was sheltered because it was just everything was going around and windy and rain. It was sheltering inside this tree. It was just beautiful. I had no time to go get a camera and, and shoot it, but it was pretty cool. It's an interesting photograph. You've got it framed between the uh, branches there, which is you know good in terms of leading your, your eye. And you've got an interesting gesture where it's kind of like, it makes me think of yoga, where you have this humble warrior stance, where your head is kind of, yeah, it looks like a Cooper's hawk. I think it might be. We have a lot of Cooper's hawks here. And they make a very distinctive cry. I really love these. I love hawks. I love birds of prey. I don't like vultures. They're gross. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a, it's a really nice portrait. Uh, very soft in the background, which is great. It's a nice portrait of this unknown, whether it's a red tail or a Cooper's hawk. If you're there, please let us know. Okay, thank you. Who's next? All right, we've got one from our good friend, Gare. Uh, and this one, of course, is uh, he's got the great, fantastic technical details for this one. So the Misty Forest is the subject here. This picture was taken with a, uh, I think that's number one, uh, number one A pocket Kodiak Jr. Uh, about wow. 19... 26 <laughs> that's from when it is about interesting and fo uh fomenap 400 the camera has a fixed focus it makes a negative of 11 by 6 centimeters on 120 film wow okay almost 100 years ago and you found this i i guess and then you went ahead and made a print of it yeah, it's no, no. Uh, he took it with a camera that is from, I think, nineteen twenty. Oh, oh, I saw. That's I thought the. the yeah, I thought the photograph no. was from. 20. Nope, he took it with a camera from. I see. A okay. nearly one hundred year old camera. Okay. Cool. I mean, hey, I know you love to play around with these, and that's very interesting. It's, um, you know, cameras are tools. You remember the five stages of photography, you know, you visualize, which is the key to the whole thing. And then you gotta know your tools, that's your camera. That's the second stage of photography. So, you know, I like your experimentation. I'm 
you know, from a phot from a compositional standpoint, I'm looking for where's my center of attention. That's my main critique. Where does my attention go? It kind of goes all over the place. So you might want to think about again, whatever tool you're using, you still want to think about putting your viewer's eyes attention on some point. You know, a focal point, whether it's a an animal flying into the frame or you walking into the frame that's a little difficult to organize with a hundred year old camera you don't have the ability to you know do a remote shutter anyway just think about that you've got a beautifully set up scene we need something to put our eyes on to make it pop by having a center of attention it was taken less than a week ago. Well, well done on your your use of vintage equipment. I I praise you for that because I should be doing that and I'm not. And I I'm really I'm something I need to get to. That's an, a goal that I've got is get back in the dark room. Okay, we've got time for a couple of more, and let's see who we right. got. Uh, we've got this one from Oliver. Um, this is a mountain view uh, from a city in Iceland. Wow, those are some interesting colors. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a lot of interesting color with that sky. I am just amazed. As I guess we're just looking at the setting sun that's causing that uh, variation in colors there. Um, this is going to be very similar to what I just said. My eye does not have a place to go to. It's like I look around the whole thing. That's fine. You're setting the scene, but I need a focal point. Perhaps a bird flying into the frame. Bird, I love birds because they give you instantly they give you a punctuation point so I kind of look for birds and I track them until I get them to do what I want in the frame that's a little tip um, if that isn't available if there's no bird available what else could you do I and mean, that's just something to think about like what else could you do to put a point of interest or a center point or focal point into your photograph because a lot of times you set it up it's beautifully set up but we're just waiting for that element to come into the frame that will somehow pull it all together okay Jared a couple of more and all right um, this is from a new user who just joined oh yeah I'd like to welcome do we have any new new AYP club members here if you guys would just say so in the chat. I'd love to welcome you. Yeah, I'm guessing Valentin, because they just joined and they did their post. Uh, and so they put hashtag critique. Uh, cool. They wanted you to take a look at this one. So. Okay. Well, it's going to be what I just said. You've got an interesting background. You've got a, yeah, basically it's, it's about this middle ground is really what's going on. There's, um, <clears throat> that would be that one go back to that one there we consider that the foreground but most of it's in the middle there and there is some background but now you've got your stage set your table is set but we need to put something on the table what is that going to be an animal walking into the frame or you if you haven't been to my critiques you know that I recommend you set up your, if you don't have anybody else that can walk into the frame, maybe you're with somebody. Ask them to walk into the frame. And you can have them walk towards you or walk away from you or walk to the side, whatever you, you're the director, you've got a scene. Now, now put something in it that will act, absolutely pull the viewer's eyes to that person or thing. Generally, it, it's either going to be a person, and again, that can be you, put it on a tripod, uh, walk into the frame. Mads Rivers Iverson does that all the time. Great landscape photographer, and he is generally the subject of his own photographs. 
it's a it's a cool thing that you have available to you which is you so if there's no animal that's going to walk in there or a deer or a bird or a horse or something nobody's with you carry a tripod set it up and walk into the frame and that's going to take your eye and put it where there's a center of attention okay let's do a couple more all right then. i think we've got one more uh and this one is from patrick and i'm going to read the caption with it first then show it no words can convey the feeling i felt when i captured this image wow okay good example of what i've been talking about there is your center of attention the bird and you waited for otherwise take the bird out it's a sunset which you know it's a colorful sunset that's that's fine but with the bird there all of a sudden my eye goes boing right there and it tells it makes it into a really interesting photograph with a story behind it so that is a good example now is that a bird over to the yep okay there's a bird right here too is there more than one I mean more nope, than two I believe it's this one and this one okay and then there's just some people on the pier you can take or leave this advice I would edit out that one on the left just get rid of it because it it your main look there's your main actor right there we don't need this side actor it actually doesn't it doesn't help because it kind of just pulls my eye a little bit over there and I go what is that is that a boat with oars or oh it's a bird so you know that's just that point if you don't agree with that that's fine you don't have to do that but I would just get edit that right out or take you one second in Lightroom or Photoshop boom it's gone and my eye goes right to the subject so that's a really good example of using the environment and waiting for what you're looking for. Let's be more patient with, with our photographs. We don't have to snap them. And that's, a, again, a great use of birds. I love using birds in my photographs because they're really great subjects. They fly into the frame, they fly out of the frame. If you don't see them right then, they're probably gonna be another one coming along pretty soon. So well done on that. Good example of putting a center of attention which could also be called a punctuation point. So I guess that's it for today, right? Yep, that's what we've got for, for today. And keep submitting your photos, and we'll be doing more of these shows. And I noticed a, a comment from Jack Sony, you don't like to stage photographs. Okay, you don't have to. You don't have to do any of these things. I'm just giving you a point that you could do if you want. I didn't like to stage photographs for a long time either until I realized it's totally under my control. Why not? And uh, what what really it's art. What difference does it make if it if it happened organically or you directed somebody? It's still your art. Every artist has that prerogative. I mean, how many painters? You could call it staging. You have a model, right? So it's just something to think about. Try it out, and you know, loosen loosen up your mind a little bit to to checking it out and see if it does help your photography. Okay, you guys, well, thank you so much. You've got a homework assignment from me. Jared, let's put a, a post up in the AYP Club where people can actually write down the answer to this. What are your goals? How's that sound? Yep, will do. Uh, so you guys can, if you don't feel like sharing it publicly, you can direct message me if you want. Maybe, maybe you don't want to put it out there. That's fine, but I'd like to hear from you. What are your goals? What do you? What's that? What's that heart wrenching? You know that grabs you by the heart, not just your head, but your heart. And uh, let me know what that is. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, remember to go over to our friends at Bay Photo afterwards and get something from them. You know, one of these one of these deals. The 40% off is your best bet right there. Go over and get one of those big prints. Um, and write your goals down. And 
uh, I didn't say to subscribe before, but I'd love to have you subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our stuff. Okay? And leave your comments, of course. Absolutely, we want to hear from you and have this kind of two-way back and forth. If you feel like it, you can share the video as well. Okay, you guys. So thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. In the meantime, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Stay creative. See you guys soon.